The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Hi, this is Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. I just returned from New York, where I attended my 30th Columbia University College reunion. I celebrated with my esteemed classmates, everyone except Barack Obama. As usual, he wasn't there. Not even a video greeting, not a personalized letter, nothing, nowhere to be found. But worse, no one at our 30th reunion has ever met him. The President of the United States is the ghost of Columbia University. Now, I'm certainly no Johnny come lately. For five years now, since 2007, when it became clear that Obama was running for president, I've been quoted in the media as saying that no one I've ever met at Columbia can remember ever meeting, ever seeing our college classmate, Barack Obama. Don't you think the media should be asking questions? Isn't this a very strange story? Now, I'm a graduate of Columbia University, class of 83. That's the same class Barack Obama claims to have graduated from. We shared the exact same major, political science. We were both pre-law. It was a small class, about 700 students. The political science department was even smaller and closer knit, maybe 150 students, max. I thought I knew, or met at least once, or certainly saw in class every fellow political science classmate in my four years at Columbia but not Obama. No one ever met him. Even worse, no one even remembers seeing that unique, memorable Obama face. Think about this for a minute. Our classmate is the President of the United States. Shouldn't someone remember him? Or at least claim to remember him? One of the speakers at the 30th reunion should have reminisced about my days with the future President. But no one did. You'd think Obama might have sent a video to tell us all how much he enjoyed his time at Columbia. You'd think he'd have sent at least a letter to be read aloud from one of his former college buddies, right? But he didn't, because Obama has no former college buddies. No one that ever met Obama, let alone befriended him, was in attendance at our 30th class reunion. Now, you might argue this is all strange, but it's possible. After all, Columbia says he graduated, and I take my college's word for it. Would one of the world's greatest Ivy League institutions participate in a cover-up, thereby risking their billion-dollar reputation? And there is one single article written for the Columbia newspaper called The Sundial with Obama's name on it. A single photo also exists of Obama in his Manhattan apartment with the man he claims is his college roommate, a Pakistani foreign student. USA Today describes Obama's roommate as a pot smoker, a cocaine user, and a foreign student. Isn't that lovely? And one single radical leftist Columbia professor who hates her Israel also claims he remembers Obama. Quite a crew in the Obama camp, huh? Hard to even believe. That's the sum total of Obama's proof of existence at Columbia University, class of 83. So I went out of my way to ask as many classmates as I could at our 30th reunion, many of them political science majors, if they ever met, saw, or heard of Obama. The answer was a resounding no from every one of them. I asked if they found this strange or worried how this was possible. They all answered yes, it's strange. I asked if they thought it was possible to be a political science major and never meet a fellow major in our small classes. They all gave me a very strange look and answered no. So I asked, how could this be possible? Can you explain this? Not one of them had an answer. Keep in mind these people I spoke to are almost all to a man and woman dedicated liberal Democrats who voted for Obama. I'm guessing 90% are major Democratic contributors in the New York area. My Columbia classmates are the cream of the crop of American society. Lawyers, doctors, billionaire hedge fund members, Wall Street CEOs, stars of the media. They adore Obama, but they all admit they never met him in their four years at Columbia. I am proud of my classmates for their honesty, and integrity. One classmate told me he was present when one of the most honored professors in Columbia University history gave a speech to alumni a couple of years ago. The speech was followed by Q of A, uh, Q and A, and this beloved professor was asked about Obama. He said, and I quote, I have my doubts about the story. The crowd was stunned. He immediately went on to the next question and never elaborated. So obviously I'm not the only one with doubts. So here's my take on this great mystery. I've never said Obama was not registered at Columbia. I'm sure he was. I've never said he didn't graduate. If Columbia says he did, then I'm going to assume he did. But I've always said there's something wrong with the story. It's rancid. It's unbelievable. It's impossible. It's the story of a Manchurian candidate, a real life Manchurian candidate. The question isn't was he ever registered or did he graduate? 
And it's interesting that one photo, one professor, and one newspaper article exists just enough to provide a thin cover. That kind of thin cover you might find created by the CIA or KGB. Really strange. But the serious question the media should be asking is, what did Obama do for two full years in between registration and graduation? Did he ever attend a class? Did he ever have a single friend other than a Pakistani national? Why is the only professor to ever come forward and claim he remembers him a radical leftist who hates Israel? What exactly was Obama doing when no one met him, saw him, or heard of him? Why are his college records sealed? What has he got to hide? My educated guess is he can't or won't ever release those records because what we'd find would be shocking. Now I know somewhere in America is an Obama defender a Kool-Aid drinker that will accuse me of lying. But are all those classmates at our 30th reunion lying too? And if I wanted to lie, wouldn't I be better off saying I knew the future president well? If I wanted to malign the president, shouldn't I be saying he was my close buddy and I witnessed all kinds of terrible things? If someone wanted to smear the president, wouldn't they be better off lying and say they saw him snorting cocaine at a Columbia party? Anyone could make that claim. But I can't say that because I never witnessed anything. Neither did any of my classmates. We didn't know him, never met him, never saw him. He wasn't at any Columbia parties. My story is simply the truth. And it's the same consistent story I've told since 2007. There is something wrong with Obama's story. That much I know. He's either the ghost of Columbia or the perfect Manchurian candidate. But something smells rotten at Columbia. Now, one PS to this story. Since I wrote this, someone sent me a link to an article published at a conservative website last year. And that website interviewed Columbia's famous professor, Henry Graff. He was at Columbia for almost half a century. He was the political science professor and the head of the political science department. And Professor Graff says, I don't believe Obama went to Columbia. I know one thing, he couldn't have been a political science major if he didn't attend my classes. And there was never a Barack Obama in any of my classes. And I have no memory of the man. And I've spoken to many professors and none of them have ever taught a Barack Obama. I'm Wayne Alaroot for Personal Liberty. See you next week, same time, same place. God bless and God save America from the man we have in the White House. Bye-bye. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.